What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to basketball. It's draft week, everybody. If you can believe it, we're already at draft week. The NBA season just never seems to end. Uh, we've actually been covering like mock drafts and talking about the prospects for a little bit now on this channel, but I've had a lot of people recommend to me that they want to see like my own rankings and my own mock drafts. They're like, well, you've been like a part of this process before and everything. Can you show us what you have? And that was a really good idea. So thank you to all you guys that have been suggesting that and everything. So what I'm going to show you guys today is my like actual big board. Like this is something that I've actually had to do for a team this summer and everything. And so I'm going to show you like my actual rankings. But hey, before we get into that, make sure you guys like, subscribe and comment. I've responded to every single comment on my YouTube channel up to this point, and I intend to keep on doing so. But hey, don't forget about my new comment policy as well about objections. If you get tagged and sent to this point of the video, it means that you put some sort of comment that was either like way too negative or it's like too confrontational and stuff. The rest of the internet sucks, y'all. I just want this to be a place where people can actually talk to each other and learn. And it's okay if you disagree, just don't be assholes to each other but anyway let's get on to the video Alrighty, i tricked you guys i'm not showing you the big board just yet let's go over rules what does this big board mean for me right so for me when i rank these people i rank these guys in terms of like where i view their talent and like in comparison to the rest of the people in this draft like like do i think that they're gonna stick around in the nba for a little while are they projects going like that those are all things that kind of go into it right like how much potential all those things kind of go into it and that becomes my big board right this is not where i think they're going to get drafted or anything like that this is like my ranking of like the players but they're like i said there's a couple different things that go into that you guys will also see that i didn't rank 60 people um i do this even for like my company and everything if teams hire us to like kind of do this stuff and help them with the scouting process i don't think there's 60 players that i consider even like worthy of getting picked if i'm just being honest with you like there's just not 60 people that i'm interested in watching that much this year and if that's the case i'm not just going to put names on a list for names to be on a list these are the guys i'm interested in at least somewhat in some capacity and that's what i leave it at and now i'm not going to go through like my whole like um we'll say like 55 through like 32 we'll say something like that so i'm just kind of going to scroll past these guys you guys can kind of look at where i've got these guys ranked there's a fan spell ranking which doesn't mean anything and neither really does the espn one at the end of the day but you've just got some basic info on these guys i didn't take the time to like write any notes or anything like that look i only have so much time at the end of the day but you guys can kind of see like where i'm ranking these dudes um and just kind of see what you think of all of it right um I i'm very interested in seeing like all of these guys up close and personal i've gotten the opportunity to do that with some of these guys which has been really really cool but yeah just wanting to show off these guys a little bit and there's a particular player i want to start off with and that's Bronny james so at 31, I've got Bronny James. Um, for those of you that like haven't been watching the mock drafts and everything, a lot of people are like, hey, where's Bronny going to go and everything? I don't know like where he's going to get picked or whatever, or to what team or for what reason. But when I watch Bronny James play, I see a very big and strong like 19-year-old point guard that has some solid ball handling skills, a ton of athleticism, sees the game incredibly well, plays really good defense actually already. And so I just I feel like the stuff that he needs to like grow on isn't as hard as like the stuff that he already has. So I really think he can be a solid NBA uh, contributor. It seems like when uh, you listen to the podcast of like a lot of these other like top NBA dudes, they seem to think the same thing. And I'm not saying that means that any of us are right or wrong or anything, but I just, I just think it's interesting because you look at him and, and you watch him play and you're like, yeah, no, I can see how this guy would translate into the NBA. It just makes sense to me. Um, I think it's good that he's going into the draft now. I just don't think college basketball is great for developing NBA talent anymore. I just, I really don't think it is. So throwing him on an NBA team and letting him develop, um, if he gets sent down to the G League, I mean, that kind of sucks. At least you're just playing against other pros and everything. But at the end of the day, he's got a pretty good teacher at home. So I, I imagine that Bronny James is going to be able to figure it out. But man, is he going to get a lot of stuff early on in his career? So I just, I feel bad form in that sense but anyway let's let's move on here to and i'm trying not to review reveal too many guys at once but at 30 i got kyle filipowski you know, at some points during the year, Filipowski was like a top 10 draft pick as a mock, and I, I've just never really had him that high. There's something about like the style at which he plays that leads me to believe that he's not going to be as successful in the NBA. And I'm going to clarify this as well. Like you guys, like, please feel free to disagree with me about anything. I want to hear you guys' opinions as long as it's constructive and everything. We all as like scouts get this shit wrong like every year, and all of these guys, if in the right situation, could end up great, right? Like there's, there's very few victories 
Victor Wenbanyama's where we all just go, yep, nope, he's going to be really, really good. And I have zero doubts about it in my mind whatsoever. And there's very few times where I'm 100% confident a guy's like not going to be good or something. So just take that with a grain of salt, right? But Kyle Filipowski, I think like at his best is going to be a guy that can maybe set some mean screens, pop out and hit a shot. Like his kind of lack of athleticism and motor kind of worries me a little bit. I don't know why they list him as like a power forward. I just don't see why he would be a power forward at all. Just because like he doesn't move very well. It doesn't seem like he like takes contact very well, which concerns me for a center always. I don't think you're going to get much like rim protection out of him. So you're kind of just getting like a spacing big, which isn't the worst thing in the world. If if we could get a little more like attitude and stuff like that out of him, I'd feel a lot better. I don't know. I just I don't see him like just translating like all that well next up we've got Tristan De Silva at 29 and in my latest mock draft video he was uh mocked as a lottery pick and you know I'm not again I'm not saying that these guys are gonna go like 29th in the draft when I put him at 29 that's just my ranking of the players um I really really like how smart Tristan De Silva is um I think he's a good shooter and all that I I think his athleticism is so concerning that I just I personally wouldn't really want to touch him as a prospect because I think he's going to be so limited defensively and offensively like don't don't get me wrong I think if you put him in the corner on the wing and just like space and things like that I think that's fine but he's he just doesn't have the athleticism going for him right now and that really worries me about him um wh what do I think his ceiling is necessarily I'd say like spacing four like that's kind of what I see him again they have him listed as like a small forward I'm like why would we want Tristan De Silva putting the ball on the floor but I don't I don't know that's just fans but at the end of the day I shouldn't be like that mad or happy about whatever they categorize these guys as but yeah I see him as like a power forward that spaces the floor a little bit like that um i don't see him necessarily being able to contribute right away but who's to say at the end of the day i mean maybe he finds a home in like miami or something and it just works right because that that's that's what can always happen next up who do we got we got jared mccain mr tiktok himself and uh, i'll have you guys know like i think the tiktoks are weird but like at the end of the day do whatever the hell you want man go get that money um jared mccain was awesome in college and i was of the perspective that i'm like he's the type of guy that should just stay in college for like four years just rake it in from NIL deals at Duke because I think he's a good college basketball player. I don't think he's the best like NBA player because like he doesn't have like a ton of quickness and he doesn't really have a, a ton of like moves. And so I'm like, OK, I don't really know what to do with you as a point guard. I think he's a really good like um, catch and shoot guy, which is cool. And like there's ways you can use that then if you get him into like uh, a bunch of like floppy sets or pin down sets and stuff like that. And he's got some gravity that way. I worry about who he's going to defend, though, because he's so like we'll say say like laterally challenged like he just he doesn't change directions very well he doesn't get separation very well and so I'm like okay you've got a point guard that doesn't look like he's going to necessarily be able to defend anybody at the next level and you can't really use him as a ball handler when he's in the game and so I'm kind of just like eh, I don't know but the shooting's interesting though and so that's why I've at least got him like within like my top 30 there but I don't know man I, I hope the best for him I hope he finds a good place to go I imagine he goes outside like the top 15 but maybe before 20 or something like that but that's just where I have him next up we've got Carlton Carrington a point guard out of Pitt who is a very interesting player so Carlton Carrington is a player that I would say I'm intrigued by that's what I would put it at right now because he's got a lot of the start of a lot of interesting skills he's got nice size as a point guard he's made some nice like passing plays he's hit some cool jump shots at times he's got a couple interesting counter moves and like a good first step but he doesn't see like the next level of passes necessarily and like his shot form has been kind of iffy at times and so I see like the beginnings of anything I just didn't quite see enough of the next level to where I can put him up higher but I think he's an interesting prospect nonetheless like I look at him and I look at some of those starting things and I, that's the kind of stuff that I would expect to see out of like a young college player I just wish I could have seen like some more spurts of the other things along the way but I think he's really interesting and I feel like a team's probably going to take him like in the early 20s or something like that I don't know how much he'll be able to contribute right away but he seems like a smart enough basketball player to where if you put him in the right system he could figure it out I don't know what his ceiling necessarily is maybe maybe I'd put him as like a like a role player that's probably where I'd see him as like a good defensive like backup point guard or something like that but I do think he's like a true point guard because I know a couple people have asked about that they're like what do you think of him in that case so I, I I could see him being like maybe even like a Knicks pick one of the Knicks picks or something like that so that's what I think of Carlton Carrington next up we've got oh I'm, I'm I'm trying to make sure I don't show too much again Jacob Kobe Walter. So I, I debated when I made like this list, I made this list maybe like 
month ago or something like that and it was kind of like my final report for the team i'm i'm with or whatever uh i put jacoby walter above carlton carrington just because he's got like a much like more obvious advanced skill set um than carrington at the moment um I don't always like Jacoby Walter's game. I think he plays kind of out of control. That's kind of typical of like Baylor dudes. Like the structure there just isn't always like all that like rigid or anything. And so um, a lot of times you get some of this free flow that just doesn't look good and it doesn't always translate well at the college level. Sometimes he's a big shot maker. Sometimes he goes absolutely ice cold. The turnovers are pretty present. Um, I do think I've, I've watched enough of his film to where I actually feel pretty good about him coming in and being a defensive player right away in the NBA. And his like archetype of player has translated pretty well to the NBA as of late which is interesting I just like it was a bit too out of control for me to put him any higher on the list and I just I don't know I haven't like gotten the chance to like you know speak to him or watch him or anything like that um I'll tell you I think most scouts kind of agree that he's kind of in in this ranking for them as well for the kind of same reasons but I, I could totally see him becoming a dude right just because of like the body type and the athleticism and the gifts that he has and everything it's just we, we got to see him actually put it together somewhere but i do think the defense will translate right away and so i guess if you wanted to kind of hang your hat on something with him i think it could be that next up we've got pacom daddy uh yeah a guy that's been I, i've been talking about him for some months now i went even when he was like a middle second round pick i was just like i look at this guy's potential and it makes a lot of sense to me already a very smart basketball player has shown a lot of spurts of being able to like handle the ball as a shooting guard can really shoot it already it's just like small frame right right now young still kind of growing into his body so I put him here because I think he's a really good project and a lot of times these foreign guys are coming over and they just do develop well because they're used to putting in the time to developing all these skills so I think it's just a really cool thing if you take him give him a year or two to kind of develop I'd take him with a first round pick if you're like a contending team or something like that think like the Denver's the Minnesota's like things like that um th that's who I'd kind of see in that uh role for picking him but yeah i do think in a couple of years he could be a really nice like contributor especially if you've got a point guard that likes to try and create a little bit more i think he'd be a good secondary ball handler eventually floor spacer and uh, he's already had some good defensive moments as well so uh, i like that yet next up i've got kevin mcculler jr so um obviously we didn't get to see a ton of him this year due to like injuries and stuff like that but man when he went down uh kansas like really fell apart and i think that's because he did two things that are really valuable at the college level it's play good on ball defense and he got to the rim right because he was able to create for other people uh, he attacked really hard he finished well at the rim he was a good on ball defender and he's just he's got a nice like build to him i i'd like i'd like to think that maybe we could put a little bit more weight on him he is a little bit older and so like i don't know i just look at his build and i'm like i, I feel like there's more meat that we can throw on him there so i don't know but i like mcculler as like a defensive stopper or something that can like maybe be a cutter to the hoop or something he's a very smart basketball player so maybe he's like cutting from the baseline or something uh getting a pass and maybe he, because he's pretty good at like finishing maybe he can just go right up and do it but you know you're going up against bigger and more athletic nba players eventually i think he's smart enough to kind of keep the offense moving and make that next swing pass so I, I like McCuller. I think uh, I think he'd be an interesting guy to bring in if healthy is the big thing, right? And uh, see what he can become. Next up, I've got Keyshawn George. So this one's pretty much a potential pick right now. If you were to go watch his highlights, I think you'd be really intrigued by George, uh, freshman out of Miami, right? Um, you'll see a lot of his uh, highlights. He's the main ball handler, and he's doing like very lackluster moves, but creating space and hitting three-point shots in people's faces. So you see six, seven, three-point shooter creates a little bit. It's not good enough to where he can be a ball handler in the NBA right now. Like maybe he develops it, but then, you know, you get deeper into the film and everything and you're like okay i see a lot of times where he's like uh miami's not running a very intricate offense not many college teams do but like you know somebody else is trying to create something and he's sliding into space he's got hands up he's like as soon as i get this ball i'm shooting this shit right and that's honestly what you want out of your shooters so he's catching and he's ready to go nice quick release jump shot looks pretty good and like shot a good percentage from three this year so I, I think george is an interesting prospect in that case so you think maybe eventual three and d guy that maybe could put the ball on the floor a little bit there i think it's going to be a project but i think george could be an interesting one 
you guys are going to get so sick of me saying they could be a project because that's just everybody at the end of the day. Um, okay, we're on to uh, Johnny Furphy. Honestly, the more film I watch of Furphy, the better I feel about him. Um, I don't exactly know what his like ceiling is, though. Like, I see him as more of a role player, but he's like so young and like he hasn't like filled into his body at all. I just don't know what he's actually going to be able to achieve. Sneaky good athlete. And okay, sorry, Reed Shepard fans. He's probably the best shooter in this draft. He's very at the very least the best catch and shooter in, in this draft. Like there's so many times where he's catching that ball. He's letting it fly. It goes in, right? Um, I don't know what position I want him to play. Probably like a wing or something like that. But I think he's got the defensive chops already where he's kind of figured it out. He's surprisingly tough. Um, and I, I really like that about him. Like just in his game, I'm like, he hasn't been afraid of contact at all or anything like that on the defensive end. So is he going to be able to contribute day one? Like, I don't know. It depends on how good of a shooter he is, right? But uh, I think he's got the attitude to where he could turn into something on like a contending team or something if they give him the time to develop and the right vets around him. But yeah, no, I'm into Furphy. Um, I think he could be a, I think he could be a really cool player for somebody. Uh, all right, next one. I've got Rob Dillingham. I know it's a lot lower than maybe you guys are uh, thinking, and this is why. It's because I don't know how to turn Rob Dillingham into a good defensive player just because of his build. 6'1", 160 is tough. That is really, really small, and his frame does not suggest that he is going to get much bigger. We've got a Lou Will type guy on us, and so that's what we have to kind of try to build. Like, don't get me wrong, like we try to develop him defensively all you will, but as I've told people before, and because people go like, oh, he could be a good defender and everything, I'm just telling you guys, uh, at the end of the day, physics wins, and so as soon as I catch the ball and I rip and I bump into him, I'm, I'm blowing him up like that's just what happens, right? I'm going through him. He's not going to be able to stop me. It's just not going to work. Guys are good enough at like holding on to the basketball in the NBA to where you're not just going to be able, be able to get these like little pokes off or anything. But offensively is where it's interesting, right? Because he is shifty. He is quick. He's got some good athleticism to him. He's hit some tough shots already. He's taken a lot of bad ones, too, but he's young. It's fine. Like it's I, I, I don't worry about that like too much. I always say you don't worry about a player's efficiency until kind of the end of their second season. You want to start to see them kind of learning from their mistakes and so that's kind of what I'm thinking with Dillingham is we have to turn him into just like a little lightning bug or something like that off the bench where he can become like uh like a real spark plug or something I just I don't see him personally becoming like a starting point guard in the NBA hope I'm wrong and that's another thing I'll say I, I hope I'm wrong about all these guys and that they all become absolute superstars mostly just because I'm not going to say in this draft I see a superstar just like bright and shiny or anything like that i hope all these guys do but um yeah that's that's just kind of my thoughts with dillingham i know like a lot of people have him ranked a lot higher this is where i have him at the end of the day next up another guy that's fallen a little bit low i know the ju the video is getting a little juicy now isn't it matas buzelis um <laughs> buzelis is the classic guy this happens every time like i do um make these like big boards for people and stuff like that is like there's always because there's always somebody that people just like aren't really in love with right that kind of falls a little bit he's fallen a lot in mock drafts and then he's crawled back up when, when you watch the highlights of him you're like okay yeah like i can kind of see what we're doing here like he is pretty athletic like he's hit some cool jumpers and stuff like that he's put together a couple nice moves then you remember it's the g league and it's all just like fast break aau anyway and a lot of times when he's in the half court and he's like doing some of these dribble moves it looks really clunky and it doesn't look like he's able to create much space um i just don't see a lot of creativity in that but where, where do i see him i feel like if he becomes a good shooter because let's remember he did not shoot well this year and that's fine i mean i mean well it's not fine like but we want we want him to get there right because that's where a lot of the the good or the hopeful good of matas buzelis comes from is that he becomes a shooter now will buzelis go like top eight probably something like that right but i'm just i'm not as high as him on him i don't see him as like a small forward i see him as like a stretch four or something like that which again it's kind of the same thing at this point but i don't want him being like switched on to guards or anything like that i don't feel good about him really defensively i don't think he's going to be able to create for himself at the next level just my thoughts but that's that's kind of where i see buzelis Number 19, we got Tyler Smith, one of the guys with a little bit more upside in this draft. Uh, small forward is actually like the goal, I think, for him in my mind. Like that's where I would try to get him to. I'd say he's a power forward right now. He's got a nice NBA body coming in 6'9", 225, not bad at all. Uh, a lot of things you see from him, like you see some good shooting moments, like you see some good defensive moments. You see him putting the ball on the floor a little bit. I think he comes in as more of a four, but I think if you develop him right, he can become like a good three-point 
uh, or a good three. So that's that's what I'd like to see out of him. Uh, he's going to be raw. Uh, he's going to go a little bit later in the draft, but he's one of those guys that I just really, really like, and I'd really like to see him develop on the right team. I don't know who it's going to be, like what team fits the best for him whatsoever, but I just think he's got so much natural ability that we, we can turn him into something. Like his level of coordination at his size is too valuable to not try to do something with it. Now we're on to 18, Duran Holmes the second. So here's here's what I like about Holmes. He's smart, like he's really smart. Um, from everything I've watched of him, this is exactly what I see him doing. I see him being able to be a guy like, let's say he was on like the Dallas Mavericks. Y'all know how Luka gets like blitzed all the time and everything, and then you have to hit a short roll. Part of the reason the Warriors are so good is because they have a smart guy like Draymond Green that becomes that roll guy. I could see Deron Holmes doing that, but he's a lot more athletic. And that's what I find to be really, really interesting about him. I don't know what his ceiling is like shooting wise, because he did hit some shots in college. That's for sure. I think he could be a, a guy that hits like them when you leave him open, kind of Bobby Porter's. Bobby Portis esque, but if you get this guy in a in a in a situation where he's told like, hey, you're the short roll guy, you can kind of make that next play. Then we just want you like crashing the glass, like using all that athleticism, rim running at times, maybe spacing the floor out and hitting a three every once in a while. So think more athletic, Bobby Portis. That's kind of what I want to see out of uh, Duran Holmes. Next up, oh, there's one that has shot up my boards and everything. Baylor Shireman. I just think Baylor Shireman's just going to be like solid as soon as he gets in the NBA. Um, probably a second round pick, maybe a late first round pick, but I got him at 17 on my board. Um, from everything you watch of him, at, like playing in college to the combine, he's just solid at everything, right? Like he play makes a little bit. He can obviously shoot the shit out of the basketball, even though it's weird and goofy looking like it goes in. Trust me, I've been I've been on the other end of it. It's <laughs> it's something. <laughs> it's really something. But um, he can play make a little bit. He can rebound a little bit. He can shoot the ball for sure. So I see him as kind of like a John Conchar type, like maybe a little bit undersized for like a wing, but he can just do a lot of things well. Incredibly smart basketball player. And so I think if you bring him into a team that needs some wings and just needs some floor spacers, I feel like he'd give you solid NBA minutes and he's not going to make a lot of mistakes. Think the Georges Niang type guys or whatever. I know it's not like a perfect comparison, but guys that aren't the most athletic athletic or anything, but just make a lot of smart plays when they're out there. I, I like Baylor Shireman for that reason. I think he's a safe pick. Let's go on to 16. I've got Ryan Dunn up here. And this is so this is why I like Ryan Dunn, because he he maybe doesn't have as much potential as like other guys um, in this class, right? Uh, a little bit. Uh, We'll, we'll, we'll say he struggles offensively a little bit, right? Obviously, the benefits of Ryan Dunn are that he's an incredibly good defensive player, right? He's got really good instincts, block shots, got some nice athleticism behind him, a nice solid frame, 6'6", 214, and he's only a sophomore, right? Really cool. The way he's been getting a lot of his buckets is just by being, being a really good cutter. Think OG Ananobi type corner cuts, things like that. That's why I like him because he doesn't really force things that he's not good at. And I think like most of the guys that go to Virginia usually end up becoming like pretty solid when you try to develop them, at least just because like in that system, they usually ask more of people. Right. And they're always constantly challenging them to get better. So what my, what my thinking is with him is like he could come in, uh, maybe not play a ton right away for a team. I think the Knicks would make a lot of sense for a team to take him with like that later 20s pick or something like that. But if you want to take him earlier, you could take earlier i mean i'm not going to judge anybody that does that but just know what he's going to be to start and try to develop some of those other offensive skills because if you get a jump shot on this guy then you've got a real thing going right there then you've got a real three and d guy that can do stuff without the basketball which is hard to find nowadays so that's why i like done next up we've got eves i believe it's pronounced eves uh missy eves missy i believe is uh how we're pronouncing it but um you guys correct me in the comments below I just think he's a surefire like backup center pick, right? Good size, good athleticism, does what he's supposed to do, like kind of a new Clint Capella, right? That's what I see out of this guy. Um, you'll, you'll have to prove it to me that you can be like a starter, like Clint Capella type thing, right? But it's like he's going to run, jump, dunk, block shots, be athletic, things like that. He's not going to be a pushover by any means, not going to do anything outside of his position or anything like that. So if your team needs a center, which a lot of teams do this offseason, there's not a ton of them on the market. 
I think this would be a great one to get. My my prediction is that he ends up in like New Orleans with like an early 20 pick or something like that. But I, I like I like Missy. Next up, we've got the big boy himself, Zach Eady. And I honestly can't believe I have him this high on the list. Not that I'm saying I like regret it or anything. It's just like that's where we've gotten with this. So obviously, Eady, um, we wonder how he's going to be defensively a little bit. Um, he's not going to get the chance to just like post up and do things like that in the NBA, just because a lot of the reason that he's able to do that stuff at the college level is because college teams just aren't smart enough to figure out what to do. It's really not that complicated to try to prevent uh, him from getting the ball. And uh, he's going to have to work a little bit more to get over. Open, meaning move a little bit more and then what kind of shape is he going to be in for that uh, we do give him credit though because last year I wouldn't have thought he could get this high um, but he improved his athleticism a lot and you can tell he's been working on his game a ton uh, I think he's going to be more of a trick player to uh, to some team just because there isn't anybody really like his size and strength in the NBA right and so that makes him interesting by itself and he should be good enough to put a ball in right like right next to the hoop or something like that or deter some shots just because of his size alone I don't think he's necessarily like sending people to like the fourth row or anything like that but that's fine like if he's your like kind of interesting unmatchable like backup center or something like that I think you could have a really good thing going with Zach Eady in that sense so I don't know who ends up picking him I've seen like the Lakers at 17 be a popular one I guess I can't disagree with that by any means. Like, let's see what JJ Redick does with Zach Eady. By the way, we're into the lottery guys now. So at 13, I got Cody Williams out of Colorado. So I was a lot higher on Cody Williams going into this season just because of like his high school film that I had seen and everything. I was like, okay, I'm kind of curious about this guy. And when I watched his uh, college film, he just wasn't as explosive of an athlete as I thought that he might be. And that's what kind of concerns me a little bit. So the 6'6" thing is and he, he's shrunk a little bit apparently too on me so that that also hurts because 6'6 not the most explosive athlete plays good defense he's shown the ability to put the ball on the floor a little bit navigate pick and rolls is cool he's been a solid passer at times but I'm like but when you're not that good of an athlete and you're also trying to do that and, you, and it's maybe not like your primary skills I get a little bit concerned the shooting is interesting um, I'd, I'd like to see where we could get it to because I don't think it's bad form or anything like that um, I just think he's going to be a project like uh, build wise and everything. I think it's pretty cool. Um, he's just got a long way to go developmentally and like maturing and things like that, which is fine. Like that's part of what the draft is and taking in young guys. Like uh, I think it's important to remember that only so many guys can be Luka Doncic when they first get, in it, get into the NBA. It's really, really hard. It's a huge jump. And so I'm just, I'm just trying to tell people I, I see potential here. I, I really do, uh, especially because of like the vision and everything that he has already. I think that's really, really interesting. I just... I don't know. It's going to be a little bit longer project than I think people think. On to 12, we've got Nikola Topic right now. So Topic, I, I put him at 12 just because I'm like, it's just such a mystery, right? Enough people like his game and everything and see the good passing and the good, the good defense and the ability to attack the rim and everything. And they're like, yeah, there's something there. Jump shot's pretty ugly. The way he moves around the court is pretty ugly too. I've only seen a little bit of it, and so I, I can't confidently say much about him at all just because I don't have the sample size to, to give you great opinions on him. But I gotta tell you, it is weird to watch him move around. You guys should go like look it up. It's just a little bit herky-jerky, and like people call it kind of like, um, they're like, oh yeah, he's a little bit uh, like spasticky or like spazzy or whatever. I'm like, it just looks uncomfortable, whatever it is. So I don't know. I just haven't seen something like it before, and I haven't seen enough of it, but there's a enough that is interesting to where I'm like, okay, I'll throw him at 12 for now. Next up, I've got Devin Carter out of Providence, a uh, junior coming in. I just think Devin Carter is just going to be able to play like day one. Think like Cason Wallace type guy. I think he's going to come in and be a solid defender. I don't think he's going to be as good as like Cason Wallace necessarily, but I think he'd be good with or without the basketball. I think he'll be able to catch an attack. I think he'll be a good enough shooter. Um, I think he's going to be a very physical presence with teams. And so if you're just looking to make sure you get like a dude, think the Spurs with like the, what do they have? Like the eighth pick or something too, I think it is like I just I wouldn't I wouldn't judge a team that wants to just go get that and be like hey we're getting a nice solid backup point guard to come in right away so that, that's what I like about Devin Carter see now we're getting into the guys that I think can contribute just like a little bit more day one so and so here we go in with Ron Holland right so Ron Holland probably gonna be able to play day one just because he's physically like that gifted and everything like that gonna gonna need a lot of time to develop though like uh, mentally to learn a lot more about basketball if you will though what I like about Ron Holland is you look at him and you go yep that's an NBA basketball player right that's awesome 
When you actually watch him play, though, he looks confused. He doesn't look like he knows what he needs to do out there. He constantly makes the wrong decision with the basketball. But man, is he talented. And at the end of the day, he put up 20 points per game in the G League, which again, that's more so like probably like 15 NBA wise, just because they score so many more points in the G League defense isn't as prominent. But what you see out of this guy is an, ex an extremely good athlete, played pretty good defense so far, playing against pro guys already, which is a cool thing at the end of the day. But he's going to need some time to develop. I think the Grizzlies would be a really good fit like at nine. I think that'd be a solid. Are they nine? I think they're nine. I can't remember at the end of the day. It's either nine or like 11. That's not a joke. But um, I, I like him in the sense where if he if he doesn't have a ton of pressure on him early on, there's definitely enough talent here to where we can really make something really cool out of him. It's just like, oh boy, you're, you're really gonna have to put him through the ringer at mini camp this summer. Next up, we're in the top 10. I got Reed Shepard here. I know a lot of people got Reed Shepard going like three possibly in the draft. The Rockets are probably trying to trade that pick. And so I, I don't know what's going to happen with that, though. It's hard to trade in this draft just because like the picks are so similar in value. So teams are like, I don't want to go all the way from like four to like 10 for just like your role player. And it's like, well, like the players really aren't that different. And it's like they have a great point. And so it's it's tough, but it's not a good look for the GM moving down when they do that. Right. It's just because like perception doesn't look good. But um, Reed Shepard. As I've, as I've said before, worried about the defense, um, and you guys will tell me, but look at the block and steal percentage. Just get over that. That number does not translate to the NBA. Don't bring up that study either that people try to say like, oh yeah, well look at this. There's so much more to defense than like steal percentage that can actually like tell you anything about it. Like there's so many different types of defenses who can jump at things, who's allowed to like on teams. There's just, there's so much to go into it. It's a, it's a bum statistic in that, in that sense for at least translating things, right? Um, it's, it's not bad for measuring like where you're at right now. It's just bad for translating things. But anyway, um, Reed Shepard, elite, elite shooter though, right? So what are, what are we going to do with him is the question. Like, is he going to develop the ball handling skills to be a point guard? Then, then I'm interested then, right? Because um, he does have a couple interesting athletic feats. I wouldn't say he's quick. He's not like shifty. He's not like creating space or anything like that. But if you get him running off screens and using that gravity, and then he can put the ball on the floor and kind of keep the offense moving, well, then I'm a little bit bit more interested right but for the time being I think he's gonna have to grow into himself physically I I hope that he'll be able to come in and shoot right away um I, I know we'll bring up the vertical and everything I don't know how often he's really gonna get to use that in the NBA but hey I'm here to see some Reed Shepard posters this year I'll be the first one to retweet it I think that'd be funny as hell so like 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 let's let's get it next up at number eight I have to John Saloon I believe is how you say it. Again, I'm going to mess it up every single time. A guy with a lot higher potential than most of the other people in this draft. I see a guy that's able to put the ball on the floor a little bit, shoot a little bit already. He's got an awesome frame, an awesome size. Like, I think he's going to be able to put on like 20, 30 pounds in the NBA type dude. Like, you, you just look at his body and you're like, oh, yeah, there's something there. And he's already a crazy good athlete. Like, I, I just think the sky's kind of the limit for this dude if you actually develop him right like that's how much I like him um I think he's a pretty perfect pick for the Thunder um at 12 I believe it is so uh I just think he's gonna need a little bit of time to develop he's one of the younger guys in the NBA but another French dude coming in with a ton of talent just gonna need to grow into it a little bit but I, I truly think sky's kind of the limit for uh for a saloon here next up I've got Kel L Ware at seven uh a lot higher than a lot of people have him I think Kello Ware is going to be a, d a day one guy that you can play. And I think his ceiling is an NBA starter in all honesty. Like I think he can, he can do a lot of things. Well, and I don't think many people are going to disagree with me. Honestly, if you've watched anything of Kello Ware, he just kind of does a bit of everything. Like he steps out and shoots a little bit. He's a good athlete. He blocks shots. Um, he does all these cool things, right? And so what I see is a guy that um, just needs time to kind of adjust to wherever he's going. Cause he's young, but he's got the skill set to where he could be a complimentary piece to like a lot of people because having a center that can step out and hit gives you the ability to to bring in a lot of different types of players at other positions on your roster. So I really like Kello Ware. I think he could develop really, really well with the right team. I'd love to see him on like the Orlando Magic. That's where I'd like to see him so that they eventually kind of have a Wendell Carter replacement because you're going to need a center that can step out if you're going to be playing Franz and Paulo together. So that's kind of what I would like to see. And that'd be an ideal place for him to end up in my mind. But I don't think there's a place where Kello Ware can go and he wouldn't be a valuable pick. 
On to number six, Dalton Connect. Um, ceiling, probably not incredibly high necessarily, but I think he comes in, contributes right away for an NBA team. I think he's got the size, strength, and athleticism to be a good defender. Um, he hasn't shown that he can be a great defender yet, but I don't see why he couldn't. He's a very smart player. He's in the right position pretty often. He just doesn't always make the right like defensive play. And so I'd like to think if you get him into a system where he's not expected to just like score, 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 score all the time, I think you'll get um, a lot better like defensive of effort out of him but otherwise you're getting a guy that can really shoot the basketball he can run in transition he'll cut and make the right plays there and he can get above the rim to finish which is really really cool from a guy his size um but yeah he's just such a gifted short scorer and shot maker that i think any team would probably be pretty lucky to have him i think he should go to the trailblazers i can't remember what pick they have is it like seven or something like that i just think putting him next to a scoot henderson that's looking to create for others is going to be a match made in heaven and again while you may not be getting some superstar out of him I think he's just going to be really solid and he's going to be in the NBA for years to come. On to the top five, I've got Terrence Shannon Jr. Yeah, there we go. There we go. This is where it starts to get interesting, right? I think Terrence Shannon Jr. is one of the most talented players in this draft. Obviously, he's at number five for me. Obviously, there was the off the court stuff, and that's what's caused him to fall a little bit. Um, every time I watch Terrence Shannon Jr. play, I'm incredibly impressed. He's a really, really good on ball defender. He sees the floor really well. He's a really good athlete. He can shoot. He can get to the rim, finish well. He's probably the best finisher and the best transition player in college basketball. I don't even think it was close. Like, he can just create so much for himself. And here's the thing a lot of these college guys come in and they usually have like one or two moves, and that's fine. They're young. He He's got counter moves on counter moves on counter moves. So he has an elaborate like array of moves that he can hit people with to go get his own shot, which I think is incredibly impressive. And he's got great balance when he does all of it. So I think he comes in and he's a day one contributor. I don't think anybody's going to start him right way or right away or anything, mostly because I don't think he gets picked in like anywhere be before 20 by any means. But I think he's going to be that good right away. So keep your nose clean and everything. And I think you you could have yourself a really gifted basketball player. Next up, Stefan Castle. Um, you could you could convince me that uh, that you like Terrence Shannon Jr. more than Stefan Castle, but Stefan Castle's younger and um, he's he's really got like the defense and like the passing down already, like more so even than uh, Shannon. And so that's why I like Castle just a little bit more. Obviously, the jump shot pretty non-existent right now. If he did have one, he'd be number one in the class, no question, because he's such a smart basketball player he can like uh, operate with the ball a little bit I wouldn't call it elite like he's like creating his own shot or anything but it's enough to where you're not really worried about it a uh, really good athlete elite elite defensive player um, I think any team that takes him is getting a very high character individual as well which is always a good thing so I'm a, I'm a big fan of Castle I don't know where he's gonna get picked I would hope he goes like four to San Antonio if they don't move up to get Reese I just think that'd be a good culture fit for him I don't think he's actually gonna play point guard I think he'll be a secondary ball handler shooting guard almost Almost every scout kind of thinks the same at this point too so that's that's kind of what i'm thinking top three donovan Klingon, and we're gonna fly through these ones a little bit more just because it's not quite as interesting i think Klingon is probably the most nba ready player in this draft right now i think he's an instant starter that comes in makes your defense a lot better um i think his ceiling is eventually becoming a sabonis type player where he can be a hub for a team because we've seen him have really smart ball or not ball handling plays but like facilitation plays and stuff where he's reading the offense making the play obviously we know he can can get up and block shots with the breath with the best of them he's got a great size and weight to start and a really good uh like mobile skill set like he can rotate his feet like either direction which is great for pick and rolls um i i just think he's a really really cool prospect i really hope the bulls trade up to get him man now that they're now that they're selling i think it'd be really cool to see him and giddy play together next up i have uh zachary reese and obviously that just means alex sarge number one let's talk about them both i think reese is a really cool player that can space the floor right away i i think both these guys are instant come in start type of dudes uh with maybe a little bit higher ceiling than Klingon, even just because they're both like pretty talented athletes uh they can uh reese really really good shooter right alex sar can step out and hit a little bit obviously Obviously, sorry, you're getting to be your rim protector, your center. I think he's an elite, elite defensive prospect in that sense with a high motor. I think it's really cool. Uh, Reese Ashe could possibly put the ball on the floor a little bit and still be a good athlete. I picture Michael Porter Jr. with some more athleticism type guy. So I really, really like these guys. Honestly, like I see them as like the same, but I give the, the bump to Alex Sar just because it's harder to find like seven foot dudes at the end of the day. And so that's where I see him. I think Reese Ashe probably goes number one. Sar goes number two. And then whoever Houston trades the pick to, because like let me tell you guys they're on the phone they're on the phone a lot right now trying to trade that pick but it's hard it's hard to trade that pick right now so we'll see what ends up happening 
But that's my big board, y'all. Y'all let me know what you think and everything. If you guys uh, want, here, here it is again just to look at it. You guys can obviously pause the video or whatever. But uh, thank you guys for suggesting this, by the way. It was a really cool thing to do. I'm glad I got to share it with you. Um, what we'll definitely have to do is like come back to this at some point, which is always a fun thing to do and just be like, okay, how bad did we fuck this up, right? Because like we, you did, right? You always did because there's just only so many players that actually succeed in like are any of them like sleepers or something like that that we just didn't pay attention to the answer is always yes that always happens with somebody so yeah you guys let me know down in the comments below and remember my new rule and everything you don't want to get that objection because if you get three of them i just prevent you from commenting on my channel anymore we're trying to keep the community clean everybody but hey we'll talk to you guys later bye